Hello everyone, The Vern here from Cinema Recall here to tell you about Newsly. Newsly is an all-in-one audio app for your iOS and Android phone. It picks up the most trended articles on the web and reads them to you in a natural human voice. For the first time ever, the entire web becomes listenable. Stop scrolling, start listening, go to newsly.me, use the promo code RECALL, and get one month free of their premium service. Check it out, and now, back to the show. This podcast may contain adult language, adult situations, and some movie spoilers, so listener discretion is advised. Ah, you know what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this? Who? Jack Burton. Me. You're a bluebird. You're a brownie. You're a Girl Scout cookie. He doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> I used to love doggy chow. I used to love doggy chow too. Want a date? Going out? Looking for some action? Need some company? This is a snakeskin jacket. For me, it's a symbol of my individuality and my belief in personal freedom. It's not important, okay? You're not important. Get used to it. Baby, you are going to miss that plane. Welcome to the Cinema Recall Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to this bonus slash newish episode of Cinema Recall. I am the Vern and this episode is very kind of cool because I know it's been a while since Ashley and I have been on an episode together in person and that's going to be coming to you very shortly. I promise you next week we're going to have a new episode full of new reviews and some new funny statements so you definitely want to be back on next week to listen to that. But for right now, since we don't have content available and I want to put something out there for you listeners, what I found is just a few shows where Ashley and I were guests on. Just a few podcasts, because I was on a few podcasts, Ashley was a guest on a few podcasts, so I thought, let's do a little uh, clip show, a little collage, and you're able to hear us on different shows. Maybe if you like the sections that you hear, you'll want to go back and check out the full episodes of these podcasts because I'm going to be posting links in the show notes for these podcast shows. Not just our episodes, but the full podcast themselves because we think these shows are pretty fucking awesome. So we're going to play this for you right now. I'm going to play for you just uh, quick ad spots from some other amazing podcast shows that you should definitely check out. So definitely listen to that. If this is your first time here in Cinema Recall, thank you very much for checking us out. We are available everywhere. You can find podcasts, Good Pods, Spotify, Podchaser, uh, Stitcher, anywhere you can find podcasts. We do have a Patreon page. You can patreon.com slash Cinema Recall Pod. I would give a shout out to all of our wonderful Patreon supporters at the end of the episode. So stay tuned for that. We're available every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. on Full Swap Radio. Again, fullswapradio.com. We're part of their Vanilla Sunday package that's there with other great podcasts. That's very cool, so bitch out to them. And yes, let's go ahead right now and get into our little clip show extravaganza. Uh, but here are the ad spots right now. Anyways, I'm the Vern. I love you all dearly. And uh, check you all later. Bye. Welcome to the podcast that wouldn't die. I'm your host, Kevin. With me, as always, is Aaron. What up, what up? Well, each week, we'll explore the classics of the horror and sci-fi genre with a little comedic twist. We will ask those important questions like, why don't they get out of the haunted house the first time they see the ghost or the demon? Why do people feel like, hey, there's been a spooky disappearance, but I'm going to investigate myself, even though I have no investigative background? Or, why didn't I realize I was dead the whole time? These important questions and many others we will get to the bottom of. So check us out each week at the podcast that wouldn't die. Be there or be square. Hey, future applauders. Do you like talking about movies? Like smart movies? 
Dumb movies? Science fiction movies. Horror movies. Fantasy movies. Do you like listening to people talk about a movie longer than it would take you to actually watch the movie? Do you sit with your friends and rant at great length about things you're passionate about? You may be interested in Shocked and Applaud. Join us while we go through peculiar movies, traditional movies, movies that we just like, movies that we find are sort of like, huh? Do we follow somebody on social media and then they posted about a movie and we're just going to watch it now? Sure, why not? Our podcast is completely unscripted, so you're going to stumble through things with us because we stumble a lot. We're going to laugh. We're going to talk about what's problematic, but really, it comes down to talking about movies. You can visit us at shockedandapplaud.com, on Twitter at shockedapplaud, and Facebook at shockedandapplaud. We hope to see you there. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. So this statement is from a very early episode of Whatever with Jason Soto, where I talk about some older silent films, and then I go into a print I pulled at McDonald's. Check it out. There there are some things that, you know, seem like they're going to be short, mm-hmm. but then they turn out to feel kind of long. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I started watching The Cabinet of Dr. Calgary, this old... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movies. It's only like, you know, an hour long or something like that there, too, but it feels longer. Than really? That. I mean, it's not bad. It's been kind of enjoyable as a silent film, but yeah. uh, just the pacing of it just seemed... A little bit longer than normal should be. Yeah, I don't know why I brought that up there. I just you mentioned about short did you features. Ever, and... Did you ever see that? You ever watched the show Portlandia? I have. It's not a sketch comedy show. Yeah, that was on uh, IFC. Yes, yes. Oh gosh, I, real quick, Jason. IFC was a channel that I used to kind of like love because during the early days of like cable and whatnot. It was the only sort of, like, free cable station that played movies uncensored and uh-huh. without commercials. And yeah. I really loved it a lot during the early days. It was on around the same channels of, like, uh, Turner Classic Movies. <clears throat> but uh-huh. this one, uh, IFC, played, like, already features and it had language in there. Right, right, yeah. Which was yeah, fucking they great. Movies or censor it or anything, yeah. yeah. But now... They are playing just regular sitcoms. They had like Dudes of Hazards. <laughs> it's the, they even had the A Team. I know you talked about the E Team. I saw yeah. I saw episodes of the A Team, yeah. and I'm thinking, aren't you supposed to be the independent film channel, not like you know TV shows from the 80s and 90s show? But then they start playing like, ad spots a lot. Then they start playing like popular movies. I think I saw the Hanover on there at one point. Yeah, it was just. The the would be an independent film channel just just to be in well, whatever I mean, the fuck we want. You can't get mad at a channel not delivering what their name is as long as MTV still exists. Yeah, well, I know. Oh, yeah, okay, well, okay. <laughs> so but, it's just the way the world is right now. Like you have to just kind of deal with it and take the good with the bad, I guess. But uh, okay. The, well, anyway, the reason the I brought bad, that you up. Both the day you have the fast of life. The fast of life. <laughs> I bought that up, Portlandia up, was every time I hear the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, I think of the sketch that was on Portlandia, and it was about um, this mailman who goes up to uh, Carrie Brownstein's house, and uh, he's like, hey, man, did you ever check out the, the the movie The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari? I recommended it to you like a week ago. She's like, oh, no, I never got around to it yet. I've been busy. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, just whenever you get to it, check it out and let me know. So, like, another week goes by, and the mailman comes back, and he's like, yo, did you ever check it out? And she's like, no, I still haven't checked it out. So getting tired of being asked, you know, about it, she finally watches it. And then she says, okay, mailman, I actually watched it. I finished watching the movie. And then he goes, you watched it? Yes! My curse has been lifted! (laughs) And then he becomes, like, a normal guy, and then she becomes, like, the mail carrier. And now she's got to recommend the cabin of Dr. Caligari to somebody else. That's great. In order to be... So every time I hear about that movie, I just think of that sketch, and it just makes me laugh. <laughs> I, 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 that's, I gotta look that one up there. I start to think about Calamari. Isn't there like a, like a table of Calamari. Calamari, or is that, or, is Calamari a, a greeting, um, or some sort of seafood? It's a, um, it's an, oct- it's octopus. It's octopus. 
Like my it's octopus teacher, the octopus, my octopus teacher. Yeah, it's it's the it's the it's the winner of the of the uh, best documentary uh, octopus teacher. He uh, you get to eat him. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's what his prize is. We get to eat him. That's, that. You know, I, I feel bad for, like, uh, villages or any type of, like, nation where octopus is their main source of food. Let's say all they have to yeah. eat is octopus. And then yeah. they watch the documentary and they're like, well, shit, I can't eat octopus now because octopus, you know, are it special. And... Octopuses are teaching you things. And now you want to eat it? Yeah. It's like fuck! I can't do that I'm now. Not, I'm not even big into seafood, and I can't even imagine trying to eat an octopus. Like that just yeah. sounds like the most extreme thing you could possibly eat. It's like for like meat eaters. It's like it's like it's like okay, you can eat a cow, you can eat a pig, but now here's a guy. Eat the guy. You like to eat you like to eat cows and pigs. Why don't you eat the guy? Yeah. It's the same thing. Like oh, you can eat fish and shrimp. Here's a fucking octopus. Eat that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Octopus are just too like slimy. It just wouldn't be good. Even deep fry that it's shit. It's just not an animal that I look at and would be like, that looks appetizing. I want to eat that. <laughs> well, cows don't look appetizing either. Pigs don't look appetizing either. But I will eat bacon like no tomorrow. I don't know. I can stare at a pig and be like, yum. <laughs> <You wanna take laughs> I look at a cow and like, let me bite into that butt. Come here, cow. <laughs> Get over here, Cal. Let me milk you, and then I'm gonna bite your butt. Baby got back. Just they, uh, but like cows wearing thongs and stuff, and <laughs> pigs like wearing like lingerie that you know puts the, <laughs> the best meat on there. You know, like, hey, that's right. <laughs> it's the thong song, but for cows. Yeah. <laughs> boo 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 boo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just, oh just, my God, Vern, you're a treasure. Don't let anything ever happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine what that's what porn's going to be like soon. Just like, you know, <laughs> hey, because I mean, everything's become the same. It's like plant based, like plant based uh-huh. foods oh, and everything, oh, yeah. which is actually some of it's n- not too bad. All right, uh, except for I think that a lot of like TV dinners, those food is already plant based. So I don't understand why you gotta tell me it's plant based. I know the Chicken cacciatore I have uh, in a pot pie is not actually real chicken, so calling it plant based is not really going to make that much of a difference anyway. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I've not. I'm trying to think if I tried a plant based food item. I have not tried. Like, I haven't tried the Impossible Whopper. The only so Impossible I don't know. Whopper. Ooh, that's actually I don't know what that good. tastes like. That's is actually, it good? It's good. Yes. Okay. It is good. Okay, uh, I, might have to, I might have to try it sometime when I'm. When I'm in an experimental mood, I might have to try it out and see uh, see what it tastes like. I'm curious. It, it um, bad. <clears throat> I have not tried like any like any restaurant now. Like now, they're all offering like the meatless option. I've not remotely tried it. When it comes <clears throat> to like restaurant foods, I gotta just stick with the actual meat stuff. But I'm at somewhere, and the only option they have is meatless. Sure, why not? I'll try. Yeah, it. yeah. I mean. I, I will try it if it's like literally if it's like I go to like a McDonald's at like 11:30 at night and they're literally like hey only meat we have right now is the meatless option and I'll be like all right I'll yeah. try it. I'll try a Big Mac with the meatless meat. McDonald's got right meatless now. option. I I I just fit the restaurant on my ass I don't know. I mean I, I imagine like Taco Bell. I mean Bell. I think everyone else does. I mean I imagine they do. I imagine Taco Bell already had meatless options for years. <laughs> They just never said it was meatless option, but Taco Bell has been doing the meatless option for like what seems like uh, infinity. Okay, McDonald's does have a meatless patty. Does it have a meatless patty? It does, so, yeah. Is it soy? Must be soy. They just call it the McPlant. <laughs> and it sounds like I'm joking or making that up because we're being goofy right now, but no, I that's a serious thing. I just looked it up. It's on a web it's on an article. And like it looks like it's a legitimate news source. It's not Alex Jones or anything. Oh, um, oh. Uh, but yeah, it, their date McDonald's has it. Uh, I think Wendy's has it. Burger King has it. Yeah, I think they're all going the meatless plan option now. So. Did I did I ever tell you, Jason, about the prank I did with a McDonald's employee one time? No. I want to hear this because I used to work at McDonald's. So okay. Go ahead. 
Okay, so I, I don't know if I told the story before the podcast. If I have, I apologize. But it's been a while since I've been on here. So <laughs> I, I went on a road trip with a bunch of friends, and we stopped at McDonald's. Now, um, we were listening to comedian Dane Cook. Okay. And Dane Cook had this, like, sketch where he would go to McDonald's and he would point to the menu and read the right, read the wrong items off of it. So I figured, okay, well, I'm going to try this at this out-of-the-way McDonald's. So I go up to the front counter and the lady behind the counter was, like, really nice. She says, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? So with confidence... I point to a random spot on the menu and say, I want the McFun pack, please. And she says, excuse me? I says, I want the McFun pack, please. And she turns around to look at the menu, doesn't see anything that says McFun pack, looks down at her menu on the screen of her computer, looks back at me and says, sorry, where did you see that? I'm like, it's right there. It's the McFun pack. I would like to have a McFun pack, please. And she's like, getting frustrated. she's like looking around there, like looking at her computer, I'm like, Ugh. and I'm like, didn't I'm like just point at the menu, like it's right there. So she actually goes, <laughs> she goes to her coworkers, and they're oh like, he 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 wants a big fun pack, and the people are looking at big fun pack, and they're actually thinking that this is a real item. They're like big fun pack, uh, and like yes, yeah, wait, and one other person comes by where the menu is and looks around there, like, oh, didn't we have a big fun? I'm sure we had some sort of special called a big fun pack. And then, so, my friends behind me are getting, like, really nervous and really kind of, like, embarrassed <laughs> for me. And then oh, my God. They actually brought up the manager. <gasps> the manager comes up there, too, and she's looking around there. She's actually checking her books. She's like, McFun Pack, did we get an email about McFun Pack? Maybe we did. So, she's checking on her, you know, devices and finding out for sure oh there's a like McFun Pack. And oh. then, finally, my, my, my friend Dave does up. He goes, he's just joking with you. There is no big fun pack. And the looks oh on their Oh my god. <laughs> the looks on their face was just so sour. Oh, few people in the god. back were, few people in the back were actually laughing. But Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, please don't spit my food, but if you do I won't be mad. <laughs> oh my god. That's oh. Yeah, no, that that's that's fucking hilarious. That that I I, I love it. Now in this section, we get to hear Ashley's guest spot on the same podcast, but instead of it just being her and Jason Soto, she is joined also by Lisa Sally Haynes and former co-host of the podcast, Rob Branch, and they get into a conversation about phone troubles, and then they talk about musicals. Enjoy. Jesus fucking Christ. Try to do something Hi, Ashley, Ashley. Welcome back, Welcome back Ashley. Sorry, my daughter called me, and whenever I get a, I'm on the phone and I get another phone call, I always press the wrong button. Like I want to end one, but I, I fuck it up every it's time. You <coughs> send your daughter oh. to voicemail to talk with us. Oh, she yeah, again. and now here I got okay. somebody else. Leave me alone, you guys. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it's because my kids. Fuck oh. off! I'm busy. I wish I could turn it off. Yeah. It's messenger kids. This kid will try and call me like three more times because they're that obnoxious. Is so funny. Oh man. Oh. That's why I. I don't mean, have that's children. that's one word I would use for it. Oh, that's amazing. And Lisa oh. here. Lisa is a, a teacher, and Jason is well. Jason's like me, no kids. Oh my god, you guys! I'm in safe driving mode. Oh. What's happening? Because <laughs> you're driving. I say something, but you're driving. Oh, no. Because you're driving. No, why are you driving? Are you? Dr- you're driving me crazy, Ashley. I know. As far as the audio <laughs> portion is concerned, people think you're driving. You're driving That's that right. The video right. people, oh. they, have, they, they know better. The video they people know. know better. That's right. Okay. Hey, everybody here on this call right Hi. now. Hi. Do you guys Hi. like Arby's? Um, I don't know yes. if I have an Arby's here. What? I might. Oh, Shut up, Rob. I'm, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I really don't know if I do. It is definitely not a regional thing. (laughs) No, no, no. I understand that. I think we've got one in Smithfield. It's one thing to be like, I've never eaten Arby's. I have Amish. (laughs) Let's go to Arby's, yeah. I I have the Amish. They come work out on my property all the time. I'm in Indiana. We have Indiana Amish. And they come in the... Now, are they Amish or are they... 
are they the other one? There's Amish. Super Amish? Or straight Amish. No. <laughs> Super Amish. And they're kind of like Amish, but they like, they'll go to Wal- Mennonites. Mennonites. And they'll oh. go to Walmart and shit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay, maybe they might be Mennonites because they come to my st- where I work. <laughs> super Amish. Hey, Let me share my screen, please. <laughs> okay. Super Amish. <laughs> I've I've lost all control of whatever with Jason Soto here. <laughs> oh. There are only two Uh-oh. states without, and is Rhode Island one of those states? We are one of them. That's really oh. that's really fucking weird. Here's why. Out. Here's why uh, we have Walt's, Walt's roast, beef. roast beef. Wait, oh. so a local we have place, a local, a local place. place, has kept a big chain away? How yeah, the hell? Because of, well, it, I guess you they can tried. skip across Rhode Island. What? <laughs> I said, I, I said, well, when you can skip across Rhode Island, it's. I think, oh, yeah, I mean, I could very easily just go to uh, Massachusetts and be the fine. Jokes. Um. But yeah, no, it's absolutely true. You could drive from one end of Rhode Island to the other in about forty-five minutes. <clears throat> yeah, I don't yeah. doubt that. But um, I, therefore, I've never been to an Arby's. So you never been to an Arby's, okay, Rob? Do you like Arby's? Fuck yeah! All right, Ashley, do you like Arby's? Absolutely. Okay, do you like Arby's so so passionately no. that no. you feel the need <laughs> to write a diss track to McDonald's? Oh damn! <laughs> I mean, hardcore. No, but let's hear this. Okay, well, before I do, before I play this, this is the whole song. It's a it's a minute fifteen. Uh, there's a I don't rapper. Play this whole song. There's a rapper who goes by the name of Pusha T. You may or may not be familiar. I've heard. Um, here's the ironic part of the. Actually, let me play the video first, and I'll tell you what the ironic part is. This is this is Pusha T's um, praising Arby's fish sandwich and dissing McDonald's. Why are they going to Arby's for a fish sandwich? Girl. If you haven't had an Arby's the reason the fish whole sandwich. World of it. Now I gotta crush it. Filet your fishes. Then you should be disgusted. How dare you sell a square fish asking us to trust it. A half slice of cheese. Mickey D's on a budget. Arby's crispy fish is simply it. With lines around the corner, we might need a guest list. Eggs and steaks left. The sandwiches taste fresh. A little cube oh, of fish from damn. a clown is basic. Say less. This argument is baseless. Drowned in tartar that filet fish is tasteless. So let's... We were talking about Arby's and now let's... we're at so Welcome Rocky. to whatever, Ashley. Wait, not not ASAP. Was it Pusha no, T? Not ASAP. Pusha T. That's right. Okay, so Pusha T was the one who who did the ba da ba ba ba. Yeah, he came up way, with that. Fuck him Who's forever coming then? up with that. Because this is Pusha T. Same guy. Every time, <laughs> I every said, time I hear ba ba, that's all I can think of. He's yes. probably he's probably saying to himself, "Fuck me" a lot because he's probably right. not getting paid for it. He's, he doesn't. I don't think he's going to be getting royalties off that. Mm-mm. Well, not that little thing, no, but the the other stuff he's made pretty serious bang. Oh, yeah. oh totally. Yeah. Totally. That was it was it's a really good jingle. It's solid. It They're is. It. It's interesting. I don't like how he gloats about, you know, I can sell water to a whale. I'm like, okay, it's, <laughs> it's like I can sell sperm to myself. You know? I've Okay, That's so weird. <laughs> that got weird. So I I've know. worked I've worked to I worked at McDonald's for ten years. The one thing Protein. I've never eaten was the fish fillet sandwich. That was the only thing on the menu that I never ate, um, okay. because it it's is gross. It is gross as shit. It is real fish, but it's like the bottom feeder of fish. Yeah, it's 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 gross. It, it's, it's just the Jason the fish. Is anybody thinking of that ridiculous? Rob is going hard for me the, today. What the fuck did I do to you, wall, Jesus? The wall trout. You guys, oh. yes. give me back that fillet of fish. Give me that okay. fish. Give me that so. fish. So Give Jason said Rob is going fish. hard for me. Why? <laughs> hey you now. guys cracked the fucking joke about my asshole in the group chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Clearly I missed something. First you off, that wasn't first off, that Wasn't, wasn't me. First off, that wasn't me. That was Lackey. So take it up on Lackey. Lies. Take it up on Lackey. That's a hashtag. Hashtag <laughs> take it up on Lackey. <laughs> okay. Um I, I just a hashtag. quick McDonald's story and then you guys can talk about whatever. Um I yeah, always no knew the show. I stopped uh I stopped uh caring about like Lent and Easter and everything like after I left uh my Catholic school. And so I would know when Lent was happening when it would be a Friday and suddenly we sell like two thousand fish sandwiches in one day. 
That was the only way I knew Lent was happening. When I got like an order for like 15 <laughs> fish sandwiches in like one day, I was like, is, but, is it Lent? Is Lent coming soon? And then I But didn't looked, you go to Catholic school? Didn't you just say that? I did, but I a, I I didn't either. care about it after after it. I didn't pay attention to anything. Like that's so, all they effing talk about. I know. That is accurate. Yeah, I know. The of positions of Christ. <laughs> I'm the resident Catholic. I'm not uh, I'm actually. not doing that again. I mean I'm the resident <clears throat> Catholic. I'm Do you, technically are, Catholic. Are you a I was dipped in the water. Not really. Was, no. <laughs> I mean I no. could so I was like, dipped in the water like a snow cone. I was dipped in the water. <laughs> they held me by my ankle and dipped me in. Um You're blessed. Yes. So I I I consider myself Catholic. I follow the belief system. I did get married in the church. Um, I don't attend weekly mass, but I do go to like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a holiday. You're a C and E baby. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I am. But that's, I'm also, um, you know, when my mother says, I want you to come to mass with me, like there are days when I will not say no. Like, so obviously the, the anniversary of my father's passing is coming up and she's got certain masses set for him. So I'll be going to all of those and, you know, it's that kind of thing. So I don't follow the Lenten, um, expectations though. Yeah, I don't uh, follow go. any of it. Zero yeah. of it. Yeah, me I'm a neither. Episcopalian. There's a lot of he things fish. in there that I don't. We're the light beer of all with, religions. So. Yeah, Robbie's fish. All right, is like that fish. the uh, skirt wearers? Was that the skirt the Presbyterian? Uh, yeah, the pres- skirt yeah. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. All, all yeah, yeah, yeah. Scottish, thank you. <laughs> I know exactly what you meant, Ashley, and I think thank it you. is Presbyterian. I believe. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah. I believe. Um, no, Episcopalians <laughs> are the light. Literally, we're the light beer of all religions. We don't believe in hell. It's just a very hot place. Um, <laughs> Wait, but do you believe in heaven? It's very sunny in Philadelphia. Um, to him, to him, hell is Ecuador or Oklahoma. Or I'm just it's hot because it's it's. Uh, hot. We, we just believe- had Oklahoma too, come through our a. Um, Don't bring on musicals. Place. Rob's gonna have a shit fit. Don't bring on. Well, musicals. they called it. So apparently, it wasn't very good, and one reviewer just called it Oklahoma. <laughs> I love this person. I know. I'm like, oh, that's you don't know who it is, but I. Damn. I'm like, that's good. I love it. Yeah, no, I don't do musicals either. Okay, see, my problem oh, with I musicals, do. I love my musicals. problem with musicals is this, and I did put a musical in the last one just because I didn't want to. Put you a did X-Men because Xanadu. you wanted to be a contrarian and not Damn. do any X Men movies. No, no, no. Okay, everybody had X Men movies. I was like, I don't want to go with the X Men because everybody knows that shit, and there are a whole bunch of other movies that start with X that but, nobody has seen. I saw X. X is good, by the way. I didn't get to see X in time. I would have so probably... So what did you pick, Rob? Xanadu? Xanadu. Oh, oh my God. I can pull my list up here. Speaking of like musicals. four obscure-ass <laughs> X movies that I think no one's ever heard of. That's what he picked. Actually, wait. X-Files? I got the list. I got the Somebody list. did X-Files. I, I did two of the X-Files. I did two of the X-Files. No, the second one sucked. Doesn't uh, matter. I Rob it. went with Xanadu, XXXY, Exogenesis, X-Files, and X-Files I Want to Believe. That See, was his X, list. The thing about and, X Genesis is that is um, that's Cameron's like student film. He picked a fifteen minute student film from like nineteen seventy two. I watched. It. I watched <laughs> that's how Rob badly he did not sure. want to put X Men into his list. I watched. Or Ashley is like, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> no, but my problem about musicals. Is I think she was made for this podcast. My honestly. one <laughs> When in everyday life do you break out in song and dance? I yeah. wish all the know, time. Bring me back that no, you don't. That's Nobody does. Why I love Nobody musicals does. Because I fucking wish we did, man. <laughs> Honey, what are you doing? I'm taking a shit. I'm taking a okay, shit. Okay. Oh. Hold on a second. Rob, Feel when I walked better. outside this morning, when I walked outside and there was snow on the ground again, oh my God. I, I was singing and, and icing or de icing my car. I was like, this is some fucking bullshit. <laughs> Why is it snowing? It's supposed to be spring. Like, See, we can't that's do that. Just, me uh, and no, Jason, we... me and Jason live in Indiana. And Indiana is quad oh, polar. There. Yeah, mm. so Indiana Yeah, you have polar, the four yeah. seasons. In yeah. a day. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. 
We get that sometimes. Today, we it was 70 too. degrees, really warm. I got the window open. Tomorrow, it's going to be 40, and it might snow. You a dick. <laughs> I wish it was 71. No. I literally, got my, I literally got my it's window infamous. open right now. My neighbors are it. like, what the fuck is going on in that apartment? <laughs> I hate your guts. <laughs> Um, Fuck you. <laughs> hey, Jason, right. you can just go fuck yourself. And they breaking out into song. Ashley has a lovely voice. What the hell did I do to everybody today? What the fuck's everyone coming after me? You have 70 I degree weather in your room, and now I've got energy. Christ. This is, what my when I'm not, this is what happens when I'm not. Now I know what this part. episode's title. Everybody hates Jason. There's That's the yes. title of the episode. <laughs> Priceless stuff there. Really great stuff. Uh, I should let you all know, too, that if you are a Patreon subscriber, again, patreon.com slash cinema recall pod, you'll be getting extended segments or sections of these segments there. So that was Ashley's guest spot on whatever with Jason Soto. Please go and check out the full episodes over at rabbitholepodcast.com. Like I said, I'll post links in the show notes. This next section comes from my guest spot on Forgotten Films. It's hosted by Todd Liebenauer, and he brings on a different guest each episode to talk about a very obscure movie from the past. And the movie that he had me watch was one called The Man from Hong Kong, which is both an Oz exploitation film and an Asian exploitation film. And we talked about the movie right now here for you. Enjoy. Not a lot of people know who he is, but he seems to be a very important person. Like he is the hero of the show and it just seems like everyone know who he is, but they don't in a way, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I mean, he, he does come across as, Kind of the most. How he's am more, I trying to say it? He's more knowledgeable than our other cop characters, yeah. and right, yet, right, he doesn't seem to have. Like, people should be like, oh wait, is that who I think it is? Like, yes, that's the. Like, he should have like this legend about him, and I guess going into this, he just didn't seem to have that. Because I know that this, this was supposed to be a vehicle for Bruce Lee, but right. Bruce Lee uh, dropped out of it for whatever reasons. And you cast this new guy, and I know that he's been in a few um, martial arts films. Like he was the one armed one armed swordsman, uh, mm. but he wasn't really known in the West as big as Bruce Lee. So I know they're yeah. probably counting on like a Bruce Lee to be in this movie because Bruce Lee would have been like a huge deal. So you don't need to explain about Bruce Lee. You just show Bruce Lee in the movie like, oh, well, yeah, he's the man from Hong Kong. Okay, yeah, he's he's Bruce Lee. He's powerful. He's magical. Uh, you cast this new person in there and I'm sure audiences were like, all right, yeah, he's a good fighter, but he just doesn't have that mystery and menage right. and powerful that you have with the Bruce Lee because Bruce Lee, you know, he was in Green Hornet and everything too, so he was a well-known name, especially in the 70s and now... Even more so, and I'm I'm not quite sure. Did Bruce Lee, does did he die around this? T- no, he was still alive in seventy five. No, no, he yeah, he was he was dead. By oh, this okay, he was okay. Uh, that would be a big thing of why he was not in the movie. I thought it was like <laughs> contractual obligations, or Bruce Lee was in another movie. Well, he actually was in another movie. He was dead, so you can't yeah. do much yeah. with a dead person. All right, he just well. I... I think you're right, though, that, you know, they they try to present Jimmy Wang Yu very much in the Bruce Lee style. He's, you know, meant to be a little mysterious. He's this, uh, you know, quiet, uh, you know, but but skilled guy who's just kind of, you know, he kind of stands there and takes it all in. He lets these two Australian guys kind of bicker and such, but he's just kind of standing there quiet. And when he needs to inject something, he does. And, you know, when the different situations play out in this movie, he's very much presented as the one who's got it all together, who knows what he's doing. And the two Australian guys are a little bit more, I don't want to say they're presented as inept. They're not, but they're a little bit more 
goofball uh, yes. you know, type of a thing. It, it actually, the more I thought about it, it reminded me a little bit of the dynamic between Axel Foley, Eddie Murphy, and then the two cops, Judge Reinhold yes. and um, John Ashton in Beverly Hills Cop. You know, Very much you've so. got this outsider who comes in and, you know, there's just, there's a different approach that these Australian cops have versus what the man from Hong Kong has. And, you know, it's not played for comedy the way it is in Beverly Hills Cop, but it is a similar kind of dynamic. You know, fish out of war story, that type of deal. And it's clear that he's a lot more cool. Uh, he's the guy that can get the ladies very easily. Uh, there's one sequence when he is um, at a building trying to get clues about Wilton's estate, and he just attacked by... A bunch of people in his office and he runs out he's being chased he jumps onto this truck that's driving away and it's with three beautiful ladies yeah, and he gets into yeah. the car with them and i'm thinking right away he's like hurt and uh there's like a chinese lady who's um uh translating and she's like well no we can't take him to the hospital because there are people chasing after him he's a good guy we should take care of him so right away i'm thinking all right it's going to cut to a scene where they're in a bubble bath together. <laughs> yeah. Or something yeah. like that. Because he's that type of guy. He's a very cool, and he knows how to fight. Uh, he's charming. Uh, there's that one sequence where they go to visit Wilton uh, up at his date, and they meet up with his, I guess, secretary or one of his liaisons. And he says to him, oh, wait, uh, I heard that uh, you shot one of our you shot one of our former employees i should give you a cigar and he goes lit, lit up a cigar case and he slams it on his hand and he goes sorry i don't smoke so he just he has all this great charismatic ways about him and um, you got george lansby as the bad guy a very stereotypical bad guy at it yeah and the movie has a lot of great Action sequences, there's a lot of great car chases in there too. And I love watching older movies because I know that this is all done with real stunt people mm. and real cars. So everything I'm seeing is actually people planned this out. Uh, every single fight sequences, uh, like the fight sequence that happens in the crowded restaurant, every single person in that restaurant is probably all stunt people. Yeah. to coordinate all those movements and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's weird watching the older movies because I just recently rewatched watched um, Police Story with Jackie Chan, and oh. which is a great movie. Uh, but all the fight sequences that happen, they, it's, it looks like it's like fast and sped up in little ways too, which I appreciate very much because it was all just kind of done in film camera. Yeah, I... I I had a f I had fun with this movie, but I just can't help thinking what would the movie be like if it actually had a Bruce Lee or if it had like a Jackie Chan because Jackie Chan has a very charismatic performance and I'm not saying this uh this actor wasn't bad at this and I'm not quite sure if this was his first English language movie he did. Um, but I think it may have been, I'm not exactly sure, but Jimmy Wang, Yu was a much bigger star in Hong Kong sure. and, you know, he, he certainly was a name. I mean, he was involved in a number of Shaw brothers productions and you mentioned like the one arms, so, one armed swordsman. Mm -hmm. Um, I know he was in, um, you know, other stuff that wasn't Shaw brothers. The one that always comes to mind for me is master of the flying guillotine, okay. which is bonkers uh movie um but yeah i mean he you know he was in lots of stuff and i'm sure in some ways this was probably an attempt to you know expose him to audiences outside of hong kong i think he does a a solid job i mean clearly his strength is with the action scenes yes it is different than like bruce lee's approach or jackie chan's approach I mean, he's got his own thing going on and he does a solid job um, you know, as far as his, as his acting in English, I mean, for one thing, his voice is dubbed by somebody else. Um, in fact, I'm losing the name of the actor here who dubbed him. Uh, oh, Roy Chow. 
uh, uh, dubbed his voice. And when I looked him up, I was like, oh, he was Lao She in the beginning of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Uh, so, uh, oh, OK. Anyway, you know, even with with that, I mean, the the dialogue is a bit uh, stilted, a bit wooden, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so but again, that's I can, not the main emphasis. You know? <laughs> I can forgive all that, too, because uh, I first of all. Uh, I have to think there's a, a site called Internet Archives where I was able to watch this movie mm-hmm. for free because I really couldn't find it anywhere else. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I actually just watched this this morning, the day of recording this episode. And are we allowed to give spoilers in this in this review? Absolutely. Okay. We're talking about a movie that's almost 50 okay. years old. So yeah. <laughs> he's, he's chasing after the bad guys after they uh, killed his his love not the reporter that he had sets with early in the movie uh after he jumps onto that bus he ends up meeting with a girl who is living at a farm with her dad who's a veterinarian and they start dating and they have like this glorious 70s montage with like <laughs> yeah. romantic music being played and you know like you, like they go horse is- back riding and they go swimming and yeah <laughs> they, they even have a scene where she goes into like i guess a tube like this um how, what, yeah there it's like this i, I don't know if it's tube. like construction equipment or what you know weird like pipes that are laying pipes around that, yeah just, pipes like, they're but, playing around like they're they're little kids, you wait, know. It's weird. Is that is that what you do on dates in the seventies? See, I I don't know. I mean, in Australia, yeah. Okay, <laughs> must be already doing that. Uh, but all, all the romances is just kind of done in, like this montage because it's weird. You're he's being nursed back to health by her, but they have like one scene together where they talk. Then they have the montage, and then after the montage, uh, she says. Uh, do you feel well enough to make love to me? And he's like, well, I can endure the pain. And you know, they <laughs> they have sex. And then afterwards, he's like, I got to go back and finish my case. And she's like, well, why? And he's like, it's my job. And, and she has that... <laughs> She has that one sequence where she makes her face look like Chinese, and she's like, "What if I get plastic surgery?" And it's like, yeah, "Oh, that was that was weird." <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much so. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, all right." I mean, I'm like, "Is that considered racist if he doesn't think it's racist?" I don't know. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to think of that. I'm like, I think you doing that is a racist thing, but he laughs about it. Like, oh, silly white girl. All right, you try to mimic me and my culture. I should have you killed. And she dies. All right. Sorry, spoiler alert, but she does die because yeah, the, the bad the, guys put a bomb. The bad guys chase him down. Yeah. And Blow, put up the car. Yeah. And the whole, the whole sequence where they, she does get exploded. Uh, I mean, it's a credit to the stunt woman and everything, too, but I figured, all right, the whole thing kind of explodes, but only she dies because she has to die because that gives our lead character motivation to chase after the bad guys. Yeah. Our last segment comes courtesy of my good friend Bubba Wheat and his podcast, It's Time to Rewind, which is a time loop podcast. It's kind of a cool thing. Bubba Wheat takes a movie that is known for having a bunch of time loops, and then he reviews each of the time loops with a different guest. I was on his podcast talking about Groundhog's Day, and now Ashley is on his podcast talking about the film Time Crimes. And this is a sort of like a scene-by-scene podcast. So if you haven't seen the movie that Bubba Wheat and Ashley talk about, do not worry about it. It's going to be just fine. I will post links in the show notes so you can check out all the past episodes of It's Time to Rewind. Bubba Wheat's new season is all about Memento, and it's very cool. I'm waiting until he's done with that full season so I can, I can just binge it, all right? But here is Ashley and Bubba Wheat talking about a particular moment in Time Crimes. Enjoy. I am your host, Bubba Wheat, and in this episode, we are discussing the second half of the second loop in Time Crimes that starts at 52 minutes and 28 seconds with Hector hearing a scream off in the distance and ends at 70 minutes and 19 seconds, with Hector taking his sweater off just before the lid closes on the time machine. Joining me today is Ashley from Cinema Recall. How are you doing today? 
I'm great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So that's awesome. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you on here today. It's uh, you know really the first time that that we've had a chance to talk. I've I've known Vern for not quite as long as you have, but I've known <laughs> Vern for quite a while now. I, I think nearly ten years at this point for me. I, I've double that, and that's what I've got <laughs> under my belt with Vern. Yeah, but I, I'm glad that he, that he put me in touch with you, and um, got you, and and you agreed to watch this film and you know talk with me in my little time loop format, just kind of diving in on on this smaller yeah. chunk of of this movie. And I know that you haven't. You told me before that you haven't quite finished the movie, so you haven't seen the ending, but. Since this, I know this is your first experience with with the film. What do you think about you know the film? Not quite overall, obviously, but you know, to up to this point, which is almost the end. You only have about fifteen twenty minutes left. Yeah, um, you know, looking and watching the preview, I wasn't expecting it to be that good. <laughs> I thought I thought the way they cut the preview, I was like, oh, this is gonna be like really cheesy. And maybe I'm not going to like it. And maybe I don't, I try not to be too judgmental. Um, but, but I really like it. Like, it's really good. I'm, I'm really impressed and I'm excited to watch the last 15 to 20 minutes. So I really, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. It's, it's got an, it's an interesting mix of not really like it has a little bit of a horror movie, but kind of a bit more of a thriller vibe to it. And there's also yeah, a bit, like a suspense. and it also reminds me a little bit of um, like compliance, because there, there's a lot of, you know, doing things just because you're told to do them or just because you know that it happened already. Yeah, yeah, yep. We're gonna okay. go ahead and get started, um, you know, talking about this clip uh, or, or this section of the loop. I, I decided to break it up in the middle just to give an extra episode and I think that this split is a good a good point to split this second loop into because the first half of this loop is mainly Hector 2 interacting with Hector 1 and then the second mm-hmm. half of the loop, loop is more Hector 2 interacting with Hector 3 uh, even though for the most part he doesn't yet realize except at the very end that this is kind of him interacting with Hector three to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it starts off with him, like right after he sits down, he hears this uh, this unnamed woman scream off in the distance. So he knows that she is, you know, awake from being unconscious, and so he goes to look to see where she is, and and you know he sees that she's gone, but he does gra- does find her necklace. Uh, just off to the side, and we get this slight little flashback, just to to show uh, him remembering that she's wearing it. And I think it's interesting that you know, seeing her in this you know very very brief flashback, it does kind of focuses on her and like her naked chest, and mm-hmm. I, I think that's interesting because. You know, the first time that Hector sees her is through the binoculars, and that's that's really like a male gaze view of her. Um, yeah. And then the second time, whenever it's, um, whenever we see the other perspective of Hector two forcing her to take off her clothes, the the nudity is it's very, um, you know, underrepresented. Like it's it's very minimized because mm-hmm. I feel like it's, we're seeing it from his perspective and Hector two, at that point, he's more interested in Hector one. Right. And, and setting up what he remembers seeing the yeah. first time. Yeah. And then now that he's seeing it in his memory, like he's getting a clearer picture. And, and I feel like that's why kind of we focus, like we, get a clear shot of her breasts again because it it is Mm -hmm. it's returning a little bit to the male gaze because it is going like from Hector's perspective and we're seeing it through his memory and you know he sees the the necklace in his memory but he also kind of 
because he's not exactly in the moment, he remembers it a bit more fondly. So we get this re slight return of the male gaze of of this unnamed woman. Right. Oh, I was going to say, I didn't realize that. And I'm I, maybe I looked down or missed that that tiny part, because when I I hear the scream, but I didn't realize that he ran off to find her. I just yeah. I looked up and then then he was just picking up a necklace and then he was remembering her with the necklace on. So mm -hmm. I didn't realize that he ran back to the rock um, or wherever he had left her. And honestly, I thought she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, she, she's dead. OK. Yeah, I, I mentioned it in, in the last episode whenever we um, talked about her being unconscious. But they it, or I think in the last two episodes, but they do make a point to show whenever Hector one sees her that he sees her breathing and we do get okay. a, a slight audio cue of her, her breathing. So whenever she's laying there unconscious, we, we do know the audience does know that she's alive and she's just unconscious and she's not dead. Well, clearly I was not paying that <laughs> close of attention and I was watching it on my phone. So maybe I just didn't notice that. And, and I do think that that's kind of a, one slide against this movie, especially in, in this section that that we're really talking about today, because he is like looking for this woman, but that's not entirely clear uh, because, right. you know, at this point, you know, he sees because it, it almost seems like he's just going back to his house and, you know, right. he's, yeah. and he stopped by the fence and uh, he's trying to you know, kick down this, um, his fence. And I, we get a, re a slight return of what I like to call like a schlub, schlubby Hector, mm -hmm. because he, <laughs> you know, it takes him a few tries. And then whenever he does <laughs> knock it down, it, he gets a bit of a stumble there. You know, this is an action yeah. hero Hector. No, definitely not. Um, yeah. And then, you know, he goes into his house and we can tell it's his house because everything's still in plastic. And this, uh, he sees the, uh, the, the phone base and, you know, I, I had forgotten, you know, whenever I was watching this earlier, taking notes, I was thinking that that was like the answer machine. But then I remembered, I just remembered now that it's like his uh, cordless phone base and then he rips yeah. it out because he realizes that the handset is missing. And so I believe he thinks at this point that the woman has the handset and she's calling the police on him. Oh, that's right. Yep. Which her choice to climb onto the higher roof was, was a bit <laughs> odd in my opinion. But, yeah, you know, you do we, you, girl. Yeah, which we're, we're not quite there yet. That, that happens a little bit later in this loop. Um, but at, at this point, he's still chasing her. I, I think you kind of mentioned it, but like, did you, what did you think that he was doing in this house? Did did you realize that he was trying to find this woman? No, I thought he was going home to either try and intercept himself or try and warn his wife. I didn't. I had no idea that that he was chasing <laughs> after the the girl from the woods. Yeah, and and I agree that I, I, mean, I think that's what that's... he was doing, right? Yeah, he's he's looking for this this woman. Yeah. And I'm and that's why I was like, well, in the and maybe I'm confused at this or but the first time and you probably already talked about this in your other episode, but the first time he goes through the loop, he sees the bandaged man. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless I miss something, which is highly possible because <laughs> I have a squirrel brain, but he runs through the woods and comes across this woman correct if i'm remembering right um yeah the, the the first yeah hector one he sees her through his binoculars on the ground as she un undresses and then That's he right. goes to find her <clears throat> and then whenever he finds her she's already unconscious and naked on the ground and then hector right. and then bandage he sees hector the second. gets yep stabs him right and then he runs to this scientist's yeah to the lab, lab. Like the time machine right. lab. Right. Which but. I thought was kind of interesting. <laughs> interesting. And I, and I know we're not on track uh, with the time second part of the time <laughs> loop. But it 
the only reason I, I like noted it in my head was because I was like, okay, so why wouldn't you just run home? Why do you, why would you like run aimlessly into like this laboratory and break in? And maybe he just, I, for story's sake, he wasn't thinking he got stabbed. He ran into the first building he could find, but he wasn't that far from his own house. So yeah, when I... second Hector, when second Hector ran to his house instead of the, uh, the lab, I was like, okay, I don't, I'm, I was like, okay, maybe he was trying to like change the loop somehow and find himself. Cause I, he, the whole point of tech Hector too. His plan was to take out Hector one. Yeah, the Hector's right? two's well, Hector two's plan was to make sure that Hector one gets into the time machine. Okay, gets into the time machine. All right. I was really under the impression that he was trying to take him out so there would be only one Hector left. Yeah, I mean he in a way he was, but essentially he was yeah. trying to take him out by having him go into the time machine and basically and become Hector to basically oh, clo- himself. Yeah, basically oh, that's his version of closing the loop. Got it. Okay. And now this Hector 2, uh I believe, you know, he he thinks that Hector the Hector 1 situation is taken care of and so he thinks that he's fine to go back home. Right. Except that he's created this situation with this woman because he basically attacked her and now she's roaming free, and he thinks that she's going to call the police on him. And so oh, he yeah. has to stop her and uh, try to explain things. And, you know, he's he goes upstairs, and he gets hit by this table that we saw Clara putting together. Which I think is yeah. funny, because it's coming from upstairs, even though the whole conversation <laughs> they were having was that it wouldn't fit in the bedroom. Oh, which I find hilarious. Like the first, I'm a, like a Tetris kid. Like my <laughs> brain is like, I can like see how things fit spatially. So when he's like, we can, I don't even think you can get that through the door. And I'm like, it's a table, like <laughs> legs in pivot legs. In. It's never, no, come on, Hector. Like, I know you, you ain't got a lot going on upstairs, but the woman can get a table in a damn doorway. <laughs> Yeah, it that's that's what we were thinking it's too. It's like a little side table. It's a yeah, little it's a side tiny table. little table. I oh lord, I, I yeah. couldn't believe that it it wouldn't fit through the doorway either. All right, so that was Ashley's guest spot on. It's time to rewind where herself and Bubbleweed discuss a small scene from Time Crimes. Very cool show. I hope you check out the full episode, and I hope you check out all the other great episodes that Bubbleweed has been doing for this podcast. Very cool stuff. So hope you check that out. Hope you check out all the other past shows that we presented for you this evening or morning, afternoon, whatever, whatever you do listen to this podcast. Uh, anyways, that's going to wrap things up right now. But before I do, I do this in every episode, I got to give a shout out to all of our wonderful Patreon supporters. Now, if you're hearing the show on you know your podcast app of choice or on our website, cinemarecalls.net, uh, like I said before, I'm going to be the the statements that you hear. Parts of it are going to be shortened a little bit, but if you're a Patreon supporter, you are going to be hearing the full episode. What did I cut? You'll have to listen to the Patreon episode to find out what I did cut or not. But for right now, I'm still giving a shout out to all of our wonderful Patreon supporters. So in no special order, I want to give a shout out right now to Matt and Ashley from Mashley at the Movies. Thank you very much for your support. I want to thank Jen, Lydia, and Naomi of Shots and Applaud. Thank you for your support. I want to thank Jeanette Mittenham from AKA Jeanette. Thank you very much. I want to thank Mr. Donnie Roberts who wrote the book The Deep Sea Anthology. Thank you very much, Donnie. I want to thank Linda Castro from Bed Knobs and Broomflits. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, I want to thank Harvey Andras, who is our guitar player for your ex-girlfriend. Thank you, Harvey. 
I don't want to thank Mr. Jason Soto from Whatever with Jason Soto. Now, if you subscribe to our YouTube page, on our YouTube page, I'm going to be reposting all of our Map of Mulholland Drive episodes that I recorded with Jason Soto and Ryan Luis Rodriguez. And I mentioned before that me and Ryan host a Twin Peaks podcast over at rabbitholepodcast.com. So check that out as well. And anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up this bonus episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And we promise to be back on for a whole new episode next week. Where with actually Ashley and I together. It'll be a fun time. Anyway, folks, I love you all very much. And I will talk to you soon. Laters. Bye.